All the footage in this video has been taken using the Corsair Qatar Pro XT. The Qatar Pro XT is a budget gaming mouse that most people don't know about, surprisingly being almost completely overlooked in the Minecraft player base. I'm going to list the pros and cons of this mouse and hopefully help you come to a more informed decision. Note: The Qatar Pro and the Qatar Pro XT are different mice, with the XT being an improved version of the normal Qatar Pro. Whenever I say Qatar Pro, I am referring to the Qatar Pro XT in this review. Let's start off with the pros. CPS. The Qatar Pro is able to reach high CPS very easily. When I got the software, there was a firmware update that was supposed to fix the double click, but I refused it, and now it double clicks a ton. Cable. The cable on this mouse isn't as light and flexible as the paracord cable on the Model O, but it comes pretty close. It is a bit heavier, but it feels more durable. Clicks. The clicks on this mouse are very light, making them very easy to jitter click, and have a lifespan of 50 million clicks. They are a bit mushy, however, and have a bit of post travel. Shape. The shape on this mouse is up to preference, but I personally like the shape, and the positioning of the mouse buttons makes it easy to switch from right click to left click butterfly. Since both mouse buttons are pretty even with each other, it can take a little time to learn how to time your block hits instead of accidentally spamming right and left click, especially with how light the clicks are. DPI This is not a usual category in my pros section, but the DPI on this mouse, when you download the software, is adjustable by one at a time. If you want to fiddle around, you could find your perfect DPI with this. Weight. The Qatar Pro weighs in at 73 grams, making it not the lightest mouse, but still a lightweight. Price. The Qatar Pro is a very budget mouse, coming in at $29 US or $39 Canadian. Sensor. The sensor on this mouse feels accurate and doesn't spin out or anything, but it does have a higher liftoff distance than most mice and you can't adjust it in the software. Now this is a new category that I am introducing from my normal reviews since quite often there are features of a mouse that, while not being bad, aren't good either, so I end up having to stick them in with a pro or a con and clarify that in the review. I'm going to call this mediums. Mediums. Build quality. The build quality of this mouse is decent, but there is a little bit of rattle when you shake it. Side buttons. The side buttons on this mouse are very accessible and light to actuate, but they feel somewhat flimsy. Now let's move on to the cons. Glide. The glide on this mouse is not very good, but it is serviceable if you don't want to buy new skates. Scroll wheel. The scroll wheel on this mouse has an annoying squeak issue whenever I scroll down with it. That may just be my copy though. Surface. The surface on this mouse is not good for drag clicking and the buttons aren't very long, but if you don't care about drag clicking, this shouldn't be a problem for you. RGB. The RGB on the Qatar Pro is very lacking, only letting up a thin strip around the scroll wheel. If RGB is very important to you, this mouse probably won't cut it. Overall, I think this mouse is a great mouse for the price, and I have been maining it for quite a long time now over my Model Low. If this review helped you, subscribing would help me out a lot. That's all ladies and gentlemen, Runaway Voyager on another voyage. Butterfly click. Jitter click. Drag click. Yeah, you can't really get anywhere there. That uh, you can kind of short drag it, but nah. Uh.